Hey, this is the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, this time around, we're going to talk about GVRP, uh, which a lot of people call Generic VLAN Registration Protocol, although it's actually Generic Attribute Registration Protocol. Um, so it is a dynamic VLAN learning protocol, right? So you can, can statically configure uh, VLANs on one or more devices, and then the other devices that are running GVRP in the environment will learn those um, VLANs and, and automatically configure themselves. So um, Cisco has a similar feature called VTP, um, but that's a proprietary protocol. So GVRP is the uh, standards-based version of that. All right, so we're going to uh, configure um, a, a static core device and then have a dynamic edge device learn those VLANs. Or some people like to have the core learn the VLANs when they're created on the edge, right? So as you're adding clients and putting them on VLANs, then then the core will will automatically learn those VLANs. So, or you could just have everybody learn from everyone else, completely up to you. Um, and there's a way to stop it from advertising VLANs and or stop it from learning VLANs on individual interfaces or all interfaces. Okay, so in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, on 7250-1, so on router 1 here, um, the first thing I need to do uh, is I'm going to create some VLANs on this device. Uh, I'm going to turn on spanning tree. I'm running router code, so I'm going to turn on spanning tree. And then a caveat of GVRP is that you need to turn on single spanning tree, or I'm going to turn on single rapid spanning tree um, in order to configure it. So we'll go into config T. Uh, we are going to just create some VLANs here. So let's say VLAN 100, uh, tag E 1 slash 2 slash 1. Uh, we'll create VLAN, excuse me. VLAN 200, we'll add the same port, VLAN 300, uh, VLAN 400, and we'll add one more, so VLAN uh, 500. Okay, so we've added all those VLANs. Now I need to turn on single spanning tree, so um, because I'm running router code, I'm not running any spanning tree, and you have to have it running on at least one VLAN before you enable single. So we'll go to VLAN 1, we'll do a span, turn on spanning tree on that VLAN, uh, and then back out of here, and then we're going to do a um, spanning tree single, and then 802-1W. Okay, so that turns on our single spanning tree. So that's the prep work done. So then uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to globally enable GVRP. So GVRP-enable is going to turn it on, and then it's going to put me into the subcontext, so you can see it's it's uh, the prompt here has changed to config dash gvrp, and at this point it's not enabled on any interfaces. So by default, just because I've enabled it globally, doesn't mean that it's actually advertising anything or learning anything. So I am going to need to enable it on the interfaces, so I can enable either all the interfaces all in one, or in this case, I'm just going to turn it on on one slash two slash one where I've added those VLANs to. So I'm going to enable it there. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to block learning. So let's have a look at the options here. So we can block applicant. So block applicant means that I'm going to not advertise my uh, dynamic VLANs out that port. Uh, block learning means I'm not going to learn VLANs on that port. Um, and then there's a couple other timers here. We can set uh, the join timers. Uh, we can set the leave timer or we could default the timers. Um, we're just going to leave those timers as they are, though. They're just fine. Um, so we're going to, we're, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to block learning because in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to be a static uh, device, right? So I'm going to create those VLANs in the core and then push them out to all the edge devices dynamically. Um, you don't have to do this. If you wanted to learn and send on the same device, you can do that. And also, if I learn a VLAN from downstream, I can advertise that same VLAN out, you know, upstream or to other devices. So that's that's all um, that's all perfectly doable. So we're going to block learning e one slash two slash one because we are going to be um, you know, a static core, uh, and, and here it's just telling you that it can't do it on SPX port. So if you're running switch port extender, it can't run, 
um, uh, uh, GVRP on those ports, at least not yet. So, uh, so that's the basics to that. That's really all I need to do to get that up and running on our device. Um, and so now I am advertising all of those VLANs I created. So uh, if we have a look here, we could do a show uh, GVRP, right? So it's going to tell me that uh, it's enabled on the system. My base VLAN is 4093, so it's running GVRP on 4093. Um, you can change that base VLAN if you wish, but for the most part you don't unless you're using that VLAN number for something else. Um, there's a leave timer, join timer, etc. Um, here we can see that I block learning on 121. It's enabled on 121. Uh, my spanning tree is single spanning tree. I have zero drop packets at this point. Um, there is eight VLANs in my GVRP database, and we'll look at those in just a second. Maximum number of VLANs that can be present are a thousand. Okay. Uh, so then I'm going to look at we could look at VLAN all the VLANs in 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 fine detail, but we're just going to look at brief here for a second. So we have eight VLANs in our database. Maximum is a thousand, um, and so these are 100, 200, 300, 400. These are the ones I created. Um, and then I have a, uh, a static GVRP base VLAN. As I said, you can change that. A single spanning tree VLAN. So those are, those are the defaults out of the device, um, right? And VLAN 1, of course, is our default VLAN. It hasn't been changed, so that's a, that's a static default. Okay, uh, so that's all I need to do on this device. So I'm going to hop over to, I'm just going to move my console here down to uh, the second device. Again, it's running router code. It works on switch code as well, but these happen to be running router code. So I need to turn on single spanning tree, enable GVRP, uh, enable, tell it what port I want it to run on, uh, and then we should learn those VLANs. So just to show you, I don't have those VLANs. Um, so the only thing in my configuration here is VLAN one, and I happen to have a VE on it at this point, but it, it, you don't have to have one for sure. Um, but there's no other VLAN, so we'll see those VLANs get learned uh, after we configure it. So we're going to config T. Um, I need to turn on spanning tree on at least one VLAN, so I'll go into VLAN 1. I'm going to do a span. I'm going to back out of there now, and I'm going to do a uh, spanning tree single uh, 802-1W, just like I did on the other switch. So that turns on my single spanning tree. Then I need to do a GVRP dash enable. Uh, okay, so it's it's successfully enabled on the device, but then I have to enable it on a particular interface. So then we do enable uh, E one slash two slash one. It happens to be the same port. It's a it's a 10 gig connection between the two switches. It's also going to tell me that it's not supported on SPX or switch port extender ports. Um, but that's really all I have to do. So I don't want to block advertising or block learning on this device, right? I want to learn everything it's going to send me. It's a it's an edge device, so I'm using a static core and dynamic edge. So then, uh, if I do a show GVRP at this point, I'm going to see you know same thing base VLAN, uh, my default timers. It's enabled on one slash two slash one. Um, and then here, the drop pack account was before I had it configured. Um, and then the number of VLANs in the GVRP database is eight, right? So, um, so I've already learned those VLANs. So if we look at show GVRP VLAN brief, we see the VLANs that I created on my static core. So 100, 200, 300, 400 are all being dynamically learned, right? So I've learned those off of my core already. So it's, you know, nearly instantaneous when you create a VLAN to when the rest of the network uh, learns it. Um, and then just to show you, so I'm going to create a VLAN. I'm going to statically create a VLAN here. So I'm going to say VLAN 1000. Oh, sorry, excuse me. VLAN 1000 uh, tag E1 slash 2 slash 1. Okay. Um, and so then if I look back at my, uh, at my VLAN brief here, I now have, you see all the dynamic VLANs and then the VLAN 1000 I just created is static. Um, so that's fine. And because I, I'm not blocking advertisements or, or, or um, applicants, then it should advertise out to the other device. But if you remember, uh, if I switch my console back over, if you remember, 
we had uh, turned on the, the, the block learning on the interface, right? So if I do a show uh, GVMRP VLAN brief here, um, we will see that I am not learning VLAN 1000, right? But if I go back into my GVRP um, dash enable, and then I take off that block learning, so no block dash learning, E1 slash 2 slash 1, right? Um, in a couple of seconds, we're going to see that VLAN show up. And there it is already. Okay, so there's VLAN 1000, uh, and it's dynamically learned now, right? But prior to that, it was it was refusing to learn it. Um, so a couple other show commands. So from a troubleshooting perspective, if we do a show GVRP, uh, we can look at statistics. So if you're trying to troubleshoot whether you're receiving those packets, etc. Um, again, you can do all the ports, or you can do a particular port. So we'll just do one slash two slash one. So we could see, you know, uh, leave packets, um, uh, join packets. So we've we received 32 join packets. Um, join in transmitted. So these are the ones I've transmitted, and these are the ones I've received from the other side. So I've 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 sent out uh, 404 packets to other devices to advertise those VLANs, and I've received 32 packets on the other side. Um, so, yeah. So if you're trying to troubleshoot, you're trying to uh, determine whether you send and receive, then that's how you're going to find that. Um, not much else there. It's a pretty straightforward protocol. You can look at individual VLANs if you want. Uh, you can look at stats. You can look at an individual port. So if I look at E1 slash 2 slash 1, here's my port. It's enabled in the port. Learning is allowed. Applicant, so advertising is allowed. My port state's up. It's in a forwarding state. Uh, and these are all the uh, VLANs that it's a member of. Um, these ones are forbidden. They're not tagged on those interfaces. Um, but these are the ones that I've learned uh, well, actually, I haven't learned them. I'm, I'm, those are uh, manually configured. And then I learned 1000, which is in a normal state on that port. OK, so that's it. Uh, fairly straightforward protocol. Um, and um, yeah, join me again. Thanks very much.